This is Fueled by Coffee, Episode 3. I'm here with my friend Jack, who I've known for many years, probably since we were like 12 or something crazy like something that. Something like that, yeah. And uh, we're going to have a little discussion today. Jack is currently going to Lehigh for mm-hmm. English, mm-hmm. and he works at a awesome Mexican restaurant called Tulum. Very yummy. He's recently got me on the uh, bandwagon of Tulum over Cali Burrito. Oh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, Jack's into, it's really funny. He's into like books and movies. And uh, I feel like when we were in middle school, you were not always like an avid reader. Or Yeah, I wasn't really a, uh, a dedicated student in middle school. Yeah. And it's really, that's... it's just really funny to look at like how you've changed. Because mm-hmm. I remember in school, like I was always the one that was like, I got to get good grades. I got to do my schoolwork. And you were just like, fuck that. And you were like getting detentions every other day for not doing homework. And and now it's like you're going to a a pretty prevalent university in the area, you know, four year degree, potentially going for a master's. It's it's just, it's fucking, it's it's crazy. A little bit of a detour than what might have been expected, but yeah. But I mean, if that's what you're doing, if that's like what you enjoy, man, like it's cool. It's been enjoyable so far. Yeah. So, we're here, we're going to talk about some stuff today, um, but as always, each episode, we have a different kind of coffee. Today, we're sipping on just some plain Keurig coffee. I think it's like the donut shop pods or whatever. The classic. With some uh, hazelnut creamer in it. <laughs> Tastes like fall. That's like my fall go-to. Oh, yeah? Yeah. But, uh, so, and the other thing that we always start off with is what is something going on in your life right now? What is going on in the life of Jackson Wakely? Uh, the life of Jackson Wakely right now is kind of just dedicated to finishing up school. I'm working on a thesis right now, so that's taking up a lot of my time. Right. And going to work, seeing people when I have the time. Right. Kind of, I don't know, I've been pretty busy. Yeah. I mean, I, I was just thinking, I haven't seen you in like, it's been like a month. Has it? Was oh, it? we were just at Brew Works. Oh, yeah, it was like two weeks ago. Yeah. It just, you know, that's the thing about becoming an adult. You know, you just, like, don't see people as often. Yeah. And it's like, you know. Cause Which is fine. Yeah. I mean, it's I mean, doable. I think it makes it more enjoyable then when you finally do see them. Absolutely, yeah. There's more to catch up on, you know. Uh, it's not like you see someone, like, every other day or every weekend, and it's like, oh, yeah, it's same like, shit. Yeah. yeah. What happened since six hours ago? Yeah. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> now it's like yo, listen to this crazy shit that happened to me two weeks ago. Uh-huh. And it's like, yeah. whoa. Got plenty to spill. Yeah. Um, well, what, what was your thesis about? What what class was it for? Like, what? Uh, well, it's for my philosophy major, because okay. I'm doing a double major. So, I'm working on this guy oh, called... I didn't know that. Yeah, I'm doing two that, majors. Wow. Holy yeah. shit. So, uh, it's this guy called Baudrillard. He's, I guess, like, kind of a contemporary Marxist, but, I don't know, more of a like media theorist i guess you could say okay. um so what i'm trying to say is that we i don't know this is going to take like the entire podcast hey man let's just let's hear it all right so i'm ready to learn let's let's teach someone somewhere something sure yeah so the what i have developed so far is that um there was a time in human history where we were existing as a community but without a self-consciousness okay you know what i mean so, like, we were conscious in the sense of, like, instinctually con- conscious. Right. But not so much self-aware in the sense that we were aware of, like, we had a mind mm-hmm. and we are responsible for our own actions, that mm-hmm. kind of thing. Like, we're very impulsive creatures before right. that. But we still knew that we needed to eat and we wanted to procreate and everything, so we stayed in a group, shit like that. Um, and then eventually that turned into displacing the behaviors that we had to other entities which is why we had polytheistic religions for a while okay so we would say like instead of having an impulse to like kill someone or something it would be like ah it's the uh it's the god of whatever yeah that's driving me to do this you know what i mean so because we didn't understand that we had our own autonomy and volition yet. yeah right um and then that gradually became a monotheistic religious system, which was kind of a, uh, uh, we have this ability to guide our own actions, but there is a right way to do there's it. There's like a more moral, yeah, a moral. Right. So compass, there's still a, yeah. a higher power that is 
s- semi guiding it through right m- more just like advice rather than like direct yeah intervention right um and then what we have done throughout these periods is collect data on our experience of the world mm-hmm. and then call that reality okay so we'll say this is the way that i feel as an individual i'm going to study this it's a it's kind of what is called positive science mm-hmm. so you would take something as your positum which is like i guess like the stupid latin word for it mm-hmm. okay and then that that becomes the object of study so okay. it's like this so like a biology is a positive science it yeah. studies living creatures okay so we start basing everything on this system where we take this gather data on it and then this data reflects what is real okay and then eventually we came to the development i think that we started to realize that it was just some of it was wrong mm-hmm and that's a shock, obviously, because we've been dealing with this data as a cohesive history and right, knowledge right. of our existence so far. Um, but then instead of uh, like evaluating the, uh, the principle of collecting data, right. we decided to evaluate the data itself. Okay. So if you think about it as like two boxes, mm-hmm. you have the the box full of data Mm -hmm. and then the box that we could consider reality you take reality and then you filter it through the data Mm -hmm. and that's how you interpret reality you know Uh, what i mean okay so if you're you're like walking around and then you think uh why does this happen Mm -hmm. then you reflect on the data and say okay this this must be what's going on okay that makes sense yeah Yeah. and then eventually we reached points of inconsistency where Mm -hmm. um Easy examples now are like race and gender, mm-hmm. where we're starting to realize that we constructed certain constraints mm-hmm. and then built that into the data to the point where they become reified, which is where the Marxism comes in. Reified just means like you take an abstract concept or something that doesn't independently exist in the world and then make it exist in the world. Right. Gotcha. So if you look at like gendered bathrooms mm-hmm. or colored drinking fountains mm-hmm. versus white drinking fountains kind of thing, yeah. like they are observable. And then the more you observe it, the more it becomes a piece of reality. Mm-hmm. And then you forget that we like, we put that there. You know okay. what I'm saying? It just becomes like the norm. Like you're like, Oh yeah. You're like, Oh, obviously this is the way the world works. Okay. So you, you use the data as proof of your conception of reality. Right. But then sometimes you forget that the data might be wrong. Gotcha. And then what happens for Baudrillard, or at least for my thesis, I'm trying to say that instead of moving in the direction of eliminating false data, Mm -hmm. we try to correct the false data. Gotcha. So we have a gender binary, Mm -hmm. and then we move it to a gender spectrum. Mm -hmm. We say the problem is not that we don't... um, like the problem with our understanding of gender is we don't have enough categories gotcha. instead of saying wait a second why are we categorizing this to begin with okay you know what i mean or like with race you could say like th- there's really no essentialism yeah, that goes right. along with actual race it's a i don't know you get the idea yeah so that's that's, that's, that's some, kind of what i'm working through right that's now. some deep shit. Wow. yeah it's a it's a little bit complicated and this is probably all going to be <laughs> disproved later <laughs> but uh we'll yeah, see what happens 10 years down the road yeah, someone's gonna, gonna find like, this podcast and you're gonna be like what is this idiot talking yeah about? this guy's nuts um well i mean that's that's totally cool yeah jack is always he you know since he's so into like school and learning now he's oh, always yeah. just a box full of information <laughs> and like you know we've talked about lots of different stuff um one of the things that we always click on is like history and um totally. You know, we've talked all about like the Cold War and just, I would say we've probably talked about every war at some point. Probably, yeah. um, Lots of war talk. But one of the things I think a couple years ago that we really clicked on, I, so I used to enjoy reading when I was a kid. And then as I got into like middle school and high school, they would make me read these books that were just bunk. And I just could not, like, they were just so boring. Like The Great Gatsby, I now have a, I have an appreciation for it. Because, like, we watched the movie, and now I see, like, 
I guess, where events correlate in the book, whereas the book, the chapters are like 40 pages long and it's just mm. rambling the whole time. Yeah. So like trying to read through that book was well, just like a chore. And it's books like that or even like Beowulf I remember trying to read. Yeah. And I was like, this is awful. Beowulf's kind of rough because um, I guess like you can see its importance as similar to like Citizen Kane's importance mm -hmm. where it was the first of its kind and was extremely influential into how we like structure a story mm -hmm. but because wasn't Beowulf like the hero's journey or hero's something journey, like that yeah. yeah which is uh, like you know the thing everyone tries to yeah. do because it works it's like a, it's a great system yeah but because it was the first it's like the most basic <laughs> and bland and yeah. just dried out version of <laughs> what we do now because we've yeah. just tried to keep it interesting yeah. since then i would love to reread it like now now that i have an attention span for reading and now that i enjoy yeah yeah it. but like at the time i think that was when i was doing online school my senior year mm -hmm. and so like i'd be sitting in front of this computer screen with this book and i'd be like this is dog this shit. is just absolutely yeah so i was like this spark is notes oh yeah spark notes is <laughs> yep, the go uh, for sure the, the beans are spilled i cheated through my my senior year of high school i still use spark notes okay well <laughs> Let's hope no one that teaches you hears this. Yeah. They probably well, won't care. I mean, you got to read the book too, but yeah, not as intently. Yeah. But like, anyways, I got so sick of reading and I was like, fuck reading. Reading sucks. You That'll know, do it. I just, and like, I did not have the attention span. Cause you know, like when you're younger, you're kind of just like all over the place. And like when you have the distractions, like the phone, the video games, the guitar, you know, sure, this you is shit you'd rather do. You sit down with a book, you read like half a page and then you're like, Oh, let's check my phone. Let's scroll through Instagram. And, uh, I would do that. Once I started working though, when I was 18, I met this guy, Mike, who is on the next, the season finale. <laughs> it's a three part episode. And he got me into a guy named David Foster Wallace, mm -hmm. which I don't even know how it came up, like how you and I clicked, put two and two together. Because I feel like Mike, Mike lent me a book, a couple books, one called Consider the Lobster and then another one called Brief Interviews with Hideous Men. Consider the Lobster is like essays and like, like the one he's like reviewing a dictionary and it's a really mm -hmm. rough read. I, I like that one. But yeah. I yeah, I remember and I was like, You're fucking crazy. How could you and then there's like uh there's one called Big Red Sun, which is about like the porn industry and yeah, how just like I remember that gross and messed up it is and um, Yeah, it's a total hellscape. Yeah. And like my favorite one was the the title essay, Consider the Lobster. He talks about like the main lobster festival. And the thing is is like with DFW, as you know, it's like he rambles mm -hmm. but it's really interesting. Like the yeah, way, he's very descriptive. Like the way he, yeah, it's it's like a, just like a very, um, I don't even know how to describe it. Just it's like overly descriptive, and like he uses some big words here and there where you gotta like look them up. Yeah. At least for me, I had to look some words up. But like it's it's still like in layman's terms to like where the basic human being could understand it. You know. Yeah, I think he he's generally talking about experiences that we've all had. Yeah. But he is super good with words mm -hmm. so um i don't know i think sometimes he tends to overcomplicate things or make them a little bit too dense yeah you know but that sure. comes with his style um i'm not really sure what he's considered other than like a postmodern writer which yeah. is like the most bullshit term ever yeah. and, like <laughs> everything falls under that now yeah. so i like i don't even know genres of writing other than like obviously yeah. fiction nonfiction, essay sure yeah biography autobiography like i don't really I don't really mm -hmm. know anything outside of that, like well, postmodern, like, I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's like a, I don't even know how that would be categorized. I guess it's kind of more like a, um, like a period in writing. Mm -hmm. So okay. all of the categories that you just said would be within the period, mm -hmm. but then the period kind of dictates what the content will be so or like, how you approach things. So it's like a subgenre kind of. Sort of, yeah. It, or it would be like kind of analogous to like the romantic period or okay you know what i mean yeah like yeah. the modern period is one and then the postmodern period is obviously the shift from that gotcha and yeah so like depends on when you're writing yeah but things like modernism and postmodernism get kind of funky because they don't they're not too grounded in a specific time because we still do them right it's more like an ideology gotcha yeah yeah but dfw i highly recommend like if you're just if you're interested in you know reading about like other people's life experiences mm -hmm. it's just like i don't know 
it just it, <coughs> it resonated with me and I enjoyed it and I still totally enjoyed yeah. it. Um, like and I, it's somehow Jack and I figured out that we both liked DFW because I think I'd been reading Consider the Lobster and then you said something about he had this speech that he did at a school called This Is Water. Yeah, my um, senior year of high school English teacher showed that to us. Really? Yeah, and it was a, I don't know, he he had a pretty big influence on me. I thought he was a cool guy. Um, so I, I remember liking that speech a lot and then kind of looking at what else the, the yeah. guy had. Yeah. I, uh, is he, okay, so we have a development in the yeah. podcast right now. John so is, John, who is on episode two, is right blowing now. up Jack's phone. So if he calls again, maybe we should have him say hello. Okay. I don't know. I'm just thinking if, if he keeps calling, but if you text him, it's whatever. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, DFW, and like somehow Jack and I, Jack brought that up, and I was like, no shit, I've been reading, I've been reading his stuff. You know, it was just like, it's one of those weird things where like the universe kind of bends in the right direction, and mm -hmm. uh, you click up. But one of the other things uh, that Jack had kind of gotten me into, uh, my senior year of high school, or towards the end of the senior year, you know, you, you're kind of trying to figure out like what your identity is, who you want to be, where you want to go. And like, I was going right into the workforce. I had no desire to go back to school. I just had enough of it. And, um, you know, you have those nights where you're just kind of like bummed out, or you just kind of feel like, like, and I was in a relationship at that point for like three years. And like, there were nights where I would just feel kind of like alone. And it was very bizarre because our relationship was very strong at that point, you know? <laughs> And uh, you just have those nights where you get kind of bummed out and you're like, man, I don't know where I'm going. Like, I know I'm going to work. I have a job lined up. You know? Totally. And you just get kind of lost. And Jack opened me up to the world of Charles Bukowski. Ah, uh, yes. Bukowski, I've always loved poetry. Ever since I was young, I feel like it's just because, you know, I'm a musician. I love music. It's close to, like, writing lyrics, I guess. You know, it's very close to writing music or listening to music. Mm -hmm. And um, so he lent me a couple books, <laughs> Love is a Dog from Hell. And when you get so alone that it just makes sense. You lent me both yeah. of those. Yeah, yeah. And I never finished them, but there'd be nights where I would I I'd get in yeah, <laughs> I'd get in these moods and I would just like crack it open, read a couple poems. Sometimes I'd be like, What the fuck am I reading? Like I think there was one in When You Get So Alone, he's talking about like a red car. Or just like something, you know, Bukowski he's hmm. he's one of those writers. He's just so like raw. He's like rough around the edges, you know? Totally, yeah. Um Is and, that what you like about him? That's exactly what I, I think it's because like for me, I, I don't mind analyzing things so mm -hmm. much. I mean, Jack is the kind of guy who he will like just dissect something, yeah, you know, get apart sometimes and uh, all the time, <laughs> <laughs> maybe all the time. there's, there is one, this is a funny story. I'm going to, you know, divert for a little bit. We're, we're driving somewhere and he was sitting in the back seat of my car. And at the time I had my Bible in the back of the car and I remembered he opened it up and he's like, huh? So this is how this is structured. I wonder why it's structured like this. What? Yeah, I remember because it was Are you like sure? I swear to God that happened because it was like most Bibles they're like structured like the uh, are they like the verses I guess they're like numbered verses and normally like it's just like they're written out like a normal book paragraphs whatever and like at the beginning of each verse there's a number for whatever reason my Bible that I was using at the time it was like line by line so it was like one two three like oh they were all numbered what well, like. I mean, they're all numbered in the books, but for whatever reason, mine, it was, like, in, like, vertical order, if that makes sense. Okay, you know, yeah. It wasn't just, like, kind of, like, meshed in throughout. It was, like, you know, yeah, it was almost like a bulleted list, mm. kind of. And you were just, like... Yeah, it's kind of weird. You are like, I didn't know it was like this. And I was like, well, it's just kind of like that one. But, yeah, so, like, Jack will look at stuff like that, and then, or, like, I think he even started reading it, and he's like, hmm, like, this is interesting, you know, just like, why, you know? It's so like, that's yeah. the type of shit that he does. I mean, he's not a... He's not a religious boy. So, like, that stuff he's always questioning. Yeah, I get caught up in shit. <laughs> yeah, but, like, either way. So, he's always analyzing stuff. Um, I digress. What were we talking We were talking about Bukowski. Yeah. Oh, and why I like him. Yeah, because he's just so, like, I feel like I'm just, like, sitting next to him having coffee. And he's, like, mm -hmm. like the book. So, over the summer, I, uh, I had some time to kill. I was looking to get into new things. You know, I was looking for ways of coping with kind of like heartbreak and stuff. And so I went out and I was like, I'm going to start reading again because mm -hmm. I had, I've kind of fell off the reading wagon last year. And so I picked up a, a collection of his poems called on love and all the poems are about love. And it's not like, you know, like, I mean, there's some that are like kind of like pretty and like, Oh, that's cute. You know? Right. But then there's like, you know, 
one's about his daughter, like a parental love, or there's ones about like he's I don't know how many ex wives he's had, you know, like there's mm-hmm. one that he calls like an old troll and talks about her beard that she had and Yeah. And then there's ones where he talks about like all the whores he's slept with and you know, it's like it's stuff like that, you know, and I was explaining it to um my friend Stephanie last week, the girl that goes to Moravian. Yeah. I was explaining, I was like, you know, there's some very sweet ones as I said, but then there's one there's one called I don't know if you've ever read it, it's like Quiet, Clean Girls in Gingham Dresses. I don't think so. And he's basically talking about like, um, you know, he it, it it's like a very sad poem because there's like this underlying theme like he just like wants to meet like a nice clean girl to settle down with but all his life he's just attracted these like kind of loose women and gotcha. have like you know all this like casual all these casual affairs with people and it's all just been like alcohol and smoking and women like you know just having sex with everyone yeah and and like it's almost like he's like i just want someone nice to settle down with and so like there's stuff like that there's just kind of like wow you know hmm. it's like a little bit more on a deeper level yeah i i feel like his whole style kind of just revolves around him being a piece of shit like he's yeah he's a terrible person and I, yeah he's I, I, absolutely I, filthy but i think it's more like a um it, it's one of those things that you can't take seriously what is that i'm showing i have three missed calls from john right now <laughs> he's freaking out yeah he's bugging yeah but anyways uh yeah i feel like it's one of those things where you have to read him and expect it you have to go into it thinking like this guy is not someone I'm supposed to identify with. Yeah, you know what I mean. Exactly. Like, so you take his perspective to be kind of a, a dark underbelly mm-hmm. of the American life, but it's it's hilarious because it's so extreme. Yeah, and he's like everything he says is just like you should be in jail for yeah. this. You're yeah, just a terrible, terrible <laughs> man. Um, but that it is enjoyable, and it's oh, like absolutely. I feel like it, yeah, it, it gives you an interesting perspective to reflect on mm-hmm. um especially in the moments where he seems like he's kind of redeeming himself and yeah. has like he says something that makes you want to look in the mirror a little bit because you're like right. all right i know this guy is the worst yeah but this kind of makes sense to me so yeah. it's like am i the worst <laughs> yeah. um yeah so it's like it, it's an interesting way to write especially like you said it's very raw and it's uh it usually just seems like he's on a drunken ramble by himself somewhere which yeah uh, from what i know about him is probably accurate yeah well it's it's funny um there's there's a poem i think it's called like the best love poem i can write at the moment i think i've sent it to you and he starts out talking about eating ass Mm -hmm. and like he's he's talking about like the first line's like i said to her why don't you put your tongue in my ass? And I was like, what am I reading? Like, yeah, he what, just, what is going on? He doesn't here? really pull any punches, but that's kind of a tradition to, to, to have that extremist perspective. Yeah. To just maintain, uh, I, it's like you have to balance the scale of yeah. the pretentious yeah. poetry sphere yeah. with like, something like Robert Frost or sure. Who, I mean, of his time too, he was kind of, rebelling against a lot but was he really yeah I, compared to like i just think that's he such, was like a poet of the people kind of thing like wow, a populist I'll, perspective i'll have to look into him more that just seems it's just like such a frilly name and i remember reading some of his stuff in school and being like eh, yeah i mean maybe now i probably to a have an third grader he seems pretty yeah. snooty but it's um but it's not too bad that that poem like he starts out talking about like eating ass and yeah. like but then he finishes it like the last two stanzas it's like you know 10 stanzas of like eating ass and being dirty and having sex promiscuous yeah. sex and then it's like the last two stanzas he basically ties it in as if you can't love the shitty parts of someone it's not real love and it, i was like oh that's mm. why you wrote about that i get it now you know even that seems like kind of like he's just slapping people in the face. Yeah. You know, like it seems like he took that statement oh, of shit. like I see it. You know what I mean? Where he's yeah. like people say like, Oh, you have to you have to love all of the person, you know? <laughs> and like if you don't love them at their worst, you oh. can't love them at their best. It's oh. just not authentic love. And then yeah. he was like, Alright, so let's talk about her like licking my butthole for two hours <laughs> and then just like put that in people's heads too you know he's just constantly 
trying to be on the contrary, I think, yeah. which is useful, but also, yeah, I don't know. And then tying that further, you just said about him just being like a like a like a drunken slob. There is a video yeah. online. If you look that poem up on YouTube, there's one where he's reading it, mm. and he's reading it in front of like a crowd. Like it's, I think it's like just like a recording, but you can hear like people are laughing. Like he reads the first line, it's like, "Why don't you stick your tongue in my ass?" And everyone laughs, and then he's like burping throughout the poem, just like a filthy yeah, pig. It's just absolute squalor. He's probably That's standing his... there with a cigarette, you know, mm-hmm. smoking. He's probably got like, you know, Jack Daniels or some sort of like vodka or whatever he drank sure. in his, his other hand you know like yeah. I, that's just what i picture yeah he just his whole persona is just like Dirt. crippling vice <laughs> and uh just the, the kind of guy that you are told your entire life to avoid yeah but yeah bukowski i i just really like him because you know i feel like a lot of his stuff yes you can you know analyze it more but like for me i'm a very I wouldn't say basic person because I can get into some pretty deep conversation if need mm-hmm. be, but like I just like taking things at face value. Like a lot of times when I write things, there's not, it's usually just pretty like upfront, like, hey, this is what's going on, you sure. know? So I think with him, I like just how he's blunt. I like that it's raw and he's like not afraid to, you know, say fuck 10,000 times in a poem. And yeah. uh, it's just stuff that can, that can be taken at face value or you can look at it on a deeper level you know so that's true to his credit he's pretty versatile you, you could um if you did want to just read something yeah entertaining mm-hmm. you could read it and be like wow this guy is horrible yeah and get some enjoyment out of that yeah. or if you think about his significance as a figure and what maybe his if he had a deeper goal what yeah. it would be then it's also pretty rewarding yeah but um i highly recommend if there's anyone that's you know whenever i talk to people I've talked to a couple of people recently who need, needed like book recommendations mm. or looking for something different to read. I'm like, read Bukowski. It'll give you, it's, you know, it may be bizarre at first for someone who's not used to that style of uh-huh. writing, but um, I think it's definitely worth the try. Like, yeah. I mean, especially for anyone who is maybe not too interested in uh, reading in general or poetry, I guess. Like, yeah. He's a pretty good example of like kind of fragmenting the the idea that people have of poetry like you were saying yeah. the like the very snooty robert frost type yeah like you can I, I think he's good to introduce just because people will be like oh maybe there is some good stuff exactly and like i think definitely through him like i'm branching out or like yeah, i want absolutely. to branch out he's like, like you he's a fantastic starter you were talking about langston hughes so now like, yeah i want to start looking into him because you said he's hughes incredible did. So I, that paper I just did was on him. Oh, really? Yeah, that's awesome. I didn't know that he was like an a militant revolutionary. Really, like, absolute. You know, yeah. when you brought him up a few weeks ago, that name like sounded familiar, but I like I don't recall any of his work, so I can't really mm-hmm. speak. I thought I remembered you talking about him before, but no. you it know, have been someone else. It was funny. I was gonna like send you one of his poems and be like. <laughs> Yo, dude, this is so good. Like, I remember <laughs> I've loved this since I was in seventh grade. Just to like fuck. Just with so you. I'd be like, all right, what? Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was. I recommended Bukowski to numerous people recently, and then yeah. I found out John liked him. Yeah, John likes. He has like, a couple of his books. I was like, that's awesome. That's so fucking cool. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, it was actually Anna that showed me him. Really? Yeah, she was pretty into him. For context, Anna is Jack's ex girlfriend. Yeah, shout she's, out. What's good, Anna? <laughs> um. Yeah, I remember she showed me him in probably, like, junior year of high school. Okay. And I was like, wow. Because it was her and our friend Ashton that were reading um, Love is a Dog from Hell, I think. And mm-hmm. the book was, like, the cover of it was, like, oh, it's got, like, a gargoyle on yeah. it or something, like, super grimy. Yeah. And at the time, I was, like, I was way about that stuff. I was yeah. like, oh, this looks this looks disgusting. Really cool. What is it? Yeah. Gotta read this. Yeah. I, um... uh... Yeah, so that was, like, my first exposure to him. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, I it's it's going to be dangerous tonight. We're going to a mall where there's a Barnes & Noble, and I feel like I'm going to end up buying a book. I probably will, too. There's a few things I've been trying to get my hands on. Like, I got to I gotta buy Christmas gifts, but mm-hmm. I'm still, like... I mean, I only have a couple things left to buy, but it's one of those things, like, I just bought Ham on Rye, but I'm already... I'm reading a different book right now. Mm-hmm. Like, I finished On Love, the Bukowski collection, oh, and then... 
I started reading. I have this book about Doug Peterson, the head coach of the Eagles. So it's it's football season. I'm reading that, but it's a, it's such an easy read. The print's really big. He's a very oh, simple yeah. man. So it's like you know going through you a always. thirty page chapter is like it's like you're talking to a four year old. Sports biographies are notoriously easy to blow through. Yeah, yeah. and um, and then I'm probably going to get on him on Rye, which is another Bukowski book. It's like a it's semi autobiographical, but he uses like. Um, I don't want to say alibis. He has like per- different personas. Like the main character is like based on him, but he has different names. Like he gives people different names. Interesting. So, yeah, and like his childhood. I think there's like something about his childhood best friend, but he gives him a different name. So yeah. it just seemed interesting. So and I remember I I was at Barnes and Noble a couple weeks ago. Opened it up, read like a page, and I was like, oh yeah, this, this is, is the one. This is really good. Word. But uh, yeah, man, reading is fun. Um, <laughs> I yeah, my friend uh, Stephanie who goes to Moravian College, I just recommended him <coughs> to her, and I sent her a couple of like his you know more tame poems because I was like, I'm yeah, not- you gotta be careful recommending him sometimes. Yeah. it's like all right, I don't really want to be associated with this guy, <laughs> but oh, I don't care. He is interesting. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and then I I was saying you know like I was trying to explain like how rough around the edges he is. And yeah. I said, and then I brought up, I was like, yeah, like there's a poem where he talks about eating ass, but then he ties it in and she was like, I'm shook. And I was like, oh shit, did I just like offend you? Which or, is like, did I like yeah. upset you or something? She was like, no, I just was not ready for that. So I was like, okay, cool. Hmm. But it's also like maybe a time thing. Like, I, I don't think anyone is really shocked by eating ass anymore. <laughs> oh, is you this going to be the next topic of discussion? No, well, I'm just going to say like part of the, his shock value is probably when he was writing yeah like uh i don't think bukowski really works the same way that he would have I mean, when was I mean, this is kind of a bullshit thing to say because i don't know when he was writing i think but well it was it had to be like 70s right i think he was writing most of his life or he, he started writing later in life because that's if i've read into him and it's like he didn't start it was one of those things where people said he was like more of an ugly duckling as a younger man and as he got older it was like he aged like a fine wine and that's when women started flocking to him. I don't know. Him. Yeah, have you seen him? He's really ugly, he's I know. He's pretty beat. And I've but... thought I've thought that myself, but apparently people were like, "Oh yeah, he's um I've read that, you know, that's when he started having all this promiscuous <laughs> sex and um he's just like Frank Reynolds for yeah. real. If if you look him up, he yeah, I okay, anyone who's listening to this, go to Google Images right now. Look up Charles Bukowski. He's got eyebrows that are about 6 inches long, pretty bushy. Uh, yeah. He kind of looks like a werewolf. Yeah. In a way, a drunken werewolf, big uh, gut. He's, he's sticking like, out of his shirt. Yeah, just picture like a horrible old white guy and you you probably got it pretty close. Yeah. But um yeah, definitely definitely great. Mm-hmm. Great read, but um we are out of time. Are we out of time? We're at 30 minutes. Well, we're mm. actually at 32 minutes, so mm. we're going to wrap this shit up. Right. We, have, we have to go meet up with some people, but... Uh, yeah, seriously. I'm this bombed over here. This is some... <laughs> we got time. <laughs> I'll drive fast. But, uh, no, this was fun, Jack. I appreciate yeah, you... Yeah, thanks for having me on. ...taking man. the time, and, uh, yeah, man, reading. Reading is fun. Is there anything you would like to add before we shut this shit down? Uh... I encourage reading, I guess. It seems to be the topic of yeah. this podcast. Which go, is, go read a book. Yeah, go read a book. And uh, the next episode will be out. So this will be out this coming Wednesday. Well, this will, I guess this is out today, December 11th, <laughs> 2019. The next episode will be out next week, December 18th. It is part one of the season finale where I talk with my old coworker, Mike, about our time at a job known as Peapod. This is an interesting three-parter. So I highly recommend y'all stick around, come back, sit down, have a cup of coffee, and uh, listen to us bitch about a shitty job. Never gets old. Never gets old. But uh, yeah, so thank you. All right, thank you. No, thank you.